This week's video, I'm in COVID lockdown four years ago. Yes, we are going back in time and looking at some footage that I recorded four years ago this week as we, the country, went into COVID lockdown. It's, it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a bumpy ride, but sit back and, yeah, enjoy this. Let's, let's, let's do it, shall we? Monday, 23rd of March. Um, big things are happening. We will beat the coronavirus, and we will beat it together. And therefore, I urge you, at this moment of national emergency, to stay at home, Shit. protect our NHS, national and emergency. save lives. Thank you. Three week lockdown. Now, this comes because people just won't take this seriously and won't listen. And I've seen it on social media tonight. People queuing to get a McDonald's before they shut. And I'm like, really? They're actually in queues sharing the germs and the droplets, the vapor droplets. People won't steer clear of each other which is ironic because 99% of the time we all look down at our phones and we don't interact with each other at all then you you get told not to interact with each other and you all do I hope that this just puts an end to it you know this is going to be a weird time um because everything's been ordered to shut apart from non-essentials <sighs> yeah they're saying that like we're two or three weeks behind Italy and that's a grim fall because the other day they had near 800 deaths in one day. This is not, not clever. We just need to do what we all can and get through this. Really, really not. Not much more we can do guys, just wash our hands, stay away from each other just do as little as possible so it has been four years since covid lockdown was announced now let me first start this video i don't want to go into the ins and outs of covid and and the lockdowns were they right were they wrong was it you know was there anything i don't want to go into any of that it happened it happened to us all whether it was right and it's wrong is uh, is you know people can argue with that and they will argue that all, all, all the time um, I'm not here for that I just want to show you a glimpse into what it was like for me four years ago in Covid lockdown living in a motorhome it is Tuesday morning half 11 last night there was the like uh, lockdown uh, order given by the Prime Minister be essential travel only you can go shopping for food and essentials like there and back that is it you can go exercising once a day and no movement apart from essential workers only, which I'm one of them. I was uh, working as a lorry driver. I never publicly announced this, but I was um, working for a company called Ocado, the online supermarket um, in uh, Hertfordshire. I don't long. I no longer work for them. Um, so I can I could I can freely say that now. Um, so I was given permission to stay in the works car park and stay there for, you know, because I need, I was needed to work. I haven't moved since Friday, apart from just going into work and that's it. I haven't socialised with anyone. I see my colleagues at work and that's pretty much it. At the two metre rule and try and implement that in every aspect of it as I can. But there's certain parts of my job that I just can't. So I am... Anti backing up, I've um, got latex, well, we've got the nitrile gloves. We've been given this lockdown order, which is they're going to review it after three weeks. Now, I'm more than happy to just hunker down, do my work, come back, go sleep, go work, come back, go sleep, go work, come back. I'm happy to do that, that's not a problem. So, today I want to go and do two things. I do want to go and top up one of the gas bottles because I believe uh, when I parked up on Friday, fuel station I went to on the Friday when I left the campsite to come back to work. The fuel station I went to had no LPG, which was a pain. So I couldn't fill up. So I've got about half a bottle on one. I've got another, another full bottle, but I'd prefer to go and get that bottle topped up. So it's now, so it's 
and then I'll just restrict my use, just use it as essential only, grab a few food items. I could have gone a lot earlier, but I'm not going to go whilst all, this, all them crowds of people. I'm going to stick to the two meter rule, stay away from people. I'm not going to talk to anyone. I'm going to take the camera with me because I just want to see how it is out there. If I'm going to go out this one time and then I'm potentially happy to lock down for a month quite easily. Try and be out as little as possible and then get back and uh, crack on with some video editing and the website. I've done the LPG and I've just got to the Asda that I always go to. Oh my God, I've never seen anything like this. There's the store and they're queuing all along here to here. Well, no, I think that guy's watching. But they're queuing along and look at them they're all queuing to get in how mad is that and then there's still loads of people walking around look this is mad i ain't going to this one i can see people trying to do the two meter rule but then you got other people that are you know just disregarding that. This guy here, behind this van door, he's giving out bread. Like, naked loaves of bread. Like, just touching it and giving it out to people. If it was sealed, uh, yeah, that's fine. But it's just open loaves. And these people are like, yeah, I'll have some of that. Yeah, I'll have some of that. All right, so just come to Audi. I need to get a ticket, but there's no queues down here. no queues whatsoever not like in uh, Asda so hopefully we'll be all right it's very uh, quiet and weird in there um, but you still got people just standing right next to you not worrying about it you're trying to stay away from them and no matter how much you try and move, they try and get closer to you. I'm like, please, can you stay away from me? And then, hey, looky, huh? <laughs> like, you're on crack. Just to clarify, that was my last trip out. I filled up the LPG bottle. So, I now have two full bottles along with all my food, all my drinks, all my snacks, I'm golden. So now, I am not moving for the foreseeable future, really. I think people are starting to adhere to what's happening and starting to realize it's real. So, just gotta crack on with it now, aren't we? Keep calm and crack on. I've got a day off today. <laughs> Key workers got a day off. Yay, one night off. Um, so this is where I'm parked up. Now, I don't know when I'm gonna publish this because this is, I am parked up at work in the works car park and my skin looks terrible. It's so dry and breaking out, so, but hey, I'm not trying to win a beauty contest. I'll win that easy. This is my view from my door. As you can see, I'm in a very, <laughs> very busy car park this is my 10th day parked up here so and today's my day off so can't go anywhere yeah it really wasn't a time to be moving around here there and anywhere um, people would have assumed and did assume that I was going on holiday when I was going to do my shopping people assumed I was going to do going on holiday because my only vehicle was my motorhome um uh, i couldn't really walk and get shopping because when the only times i got to go shopping was on that one time when i had a day off today's plan is to clean the motorhome as you can see it's a little it's not terrible, it's just stuff around. Uh, it's their clothes, gadgets, just bag stuff. That's if I need to store more food, 
and just odds and sods. So my plan is put stuff away, which I've got out and not used, um, tidy up, and then crack on with uh, do some hoovering. I'm gonna wipe all the surfaces down, you know, get the get the disinfectants out, give my home a good clean inside, and then um, I'll probably have something to eat. Talk to a few friends, maybe do some video chats, and basically just edit a couple of videos today. But yeah, it's a bit weird. Like I'm not, I've never been parked up this long. This is just not normal for me. I'm like, ah, I need to go, need to move, need to move, need to move. There is some real bad stuff going on for van lifers. I mean, I don't know Liam the terrible. He was in the in the countryside. Now he's in he's in urban areas um, because he's been driven out basically. Uh, with locals and the police and yeah there's car parks that are getting closed down left right and centre it's not even no fun for the trucks because they're, they're shutting all the public toilets the showers nowhere to eat is open apart from maybe if you're lucky you get like a you get like a uh, a petrol stations open but even in there you're going to get some I'm not because I don't eat carbs but you're going to get some stupid piss poor sandwich for about four quid it's not really what you want after you've been on the road or you're doing a day's work and you you know and you can't pop tesco's when you finish because it takes too long and you're on long shifts now honestly i've never worked more in my life because they changed the rules for the tacos uh, on the lorries uh, so we could work longer hours and uh, we could work more um, obviously the country needed it, you know, it was the, the least I could do compared to, you know, what the, you know, the frontline workers were doing, the emergency services, the NHS, the nurses, all, all of that, you know, mine was that much, you know, compared to theirs. I've got to tip my hat to work, they're, they've been great, you know, they're not bothering me, and they let me just do what I do, and if I do catch anything, because a few people have asked that, if I, because I am exposed really. I'm not, nowhere near as exposed as the nurses and doctors that are dealing with this in the hospital. Damn, they've got balls the size of melons. And you're hearing on the news that they haven't got um, like enough PPE or adequate PPE. It's a crock of shit, that is. They should have everything they need. You've got firefighters, police, NHS workers, doctors, medics, all of them. Uh, and the army. You've got the army, all the soldiers. They paid so poorly. I honestly think, right, even if we didn't give them a pay rise, we just said, you know what, you're doing a good thing, we can't give you loads more, but we won't take any tax from you. It's not going to cost billions like stupid banks have cost us before. I'm going to say like 99% of MPs have got a bit of money in their pocket. How about they stop their expenses? They don't need their expenses. I don't get freaking expenses. The money I earn pays for everything I need. Travel, uh, food, taxis. If I want a taxi, oh, I've got to pay for it myself. Same as every other Joe in the street. You know, if, if I've got to get a train, oh, I've got to pay for it myself. I've got to get to work, I pay for that myself. If I want to go to a hotel, oh look, I pay. you see the pattern here? We all pay for things ourselves, why do they not? Why do they get all these expenses? They do not need them. If you care about the country and you care about the job, you accept your decent salary, which is a hefty salary anyway, and you've got fingers in pies anyway. So how about we just knock all them expenses on the head because you don't need them, and we just don't ask the, uh, the emergency services in the NHS and the military to pay tax. Well, yes, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but we'll, we'll, we're looking to do this. We're looking to do that. We're looking to do this. Oh, just pulled into Watford Gap Services. It's Wednesday the 1st of April now. April. Look at this. Look how dead it is. There's loads of trucks about, obviously. But I've never seen it at a ghost town like this. Only at like 1 2 in the morning. But for seven o'clock in the morning, now look, what for Gap McDonald's? All shut. That's mad. All shut, no one around. As quiet as anything. That is 
Watford Gap in a lockdown. It is ghost town. And the toilets, they've blocked the urinals. Like, so two urinals are blocked either side, then there's one, then there's two blocked, then there's one. And then they've blocked all the taps because they've got like a, all taps on like a, a round wheel. So there's about six or eight of them. But they've blocked them, so there's only one each side of the actual sink. So you are six foot apart. And then they've closed all the toilets apart from about three. So there's toilet, close, close, toilet, close, close, toilet. And it just feels eerie as hell to be a Watford Gap. And this is just, I mean, this place must take some serious money on a normal time, normal day. McDonald's is always banging. And then you've got Costa, and you've got some other food place. They're always rammed. It is um, Wednesday afternoon. I'm obviously in bed. Uh, so last night, there was a note on my windscreen. You can't park here permanently. Um, you need to move it. Um, and I assume that was from the, the security team or the, the gatehouse. Yeah, they didn't know, so they just done it. That's their job. And then I got back from my run this morning, uh, my job run, not not jogging. Um, went in to do all my paperwork, and they uh, said, "Oh yeah, we've had a few complaints about your motorhome, about being in the outside car park." Why are people complaining? I'm not doing anything. I literally finish my work, walk over to the car park, put my stuff in the front seat and then get in the side door. My blinds are shut, I'm just taking a parking space. That's all I'm taking. I've not asked for any water, I've not asked for any services, any electric, any waste disposal points, I've not asked for anything. I will have to go do that myself and I expected to do that. That's the life I'm living. I expect to do that, I'm not gonna ask for that. All I wanted was the safety of not having to move. And people are complaining, I'm not even affecting them. I had death threats, you know, throughout the, the COVID lockdown. Um, people thinking I'm holiday, people thinking I was spreading the, the, the germ, the disease. People think I was spreading COVID. Um, people were shouting out really obscene things, um, which they little did they know I was the one out there delivering their shopping, you know, while they were sitting at home on the sofa. But I just wanted to um, put this video out because I've got a lot of footage. Um, of when I was driving around and I took my drone in the truck. I don't know if I was meant to do that or not, but hey, they can't sack me now, can they? I took it up over some of the uh, motorways. It was so, so, so quiet. I mean, it's once, almost once in a lifetime thing to see how quiet the M1 was on a Monday morning. Because I was a lorry driver, I was in the services quite a lot. So I'd be going to like Watford Gap and it's just ghost town. It was absolute ghost town it really was so i wanted to look back on how far we've come you know now we have our our freedoms back we can travel we can go out we can do this we can do that um which is great and i, I just want to you know kind of again i don't want to debate the rights and wrongs of it but i just want to point out that freedoms and life is fragile i've been reminded of that this week to be fair i mean not that she was really young, but my nan passed this week um, quite suddenly, um, which is, you know, it's not a nice thing to happen. And it's, um, yeah, it's a bit of a, a shock, to be fair. But it, it emphasises, and again, she was in her mid, mid, mid 80s. So I'm not saying she died young, but um, it just emphasises, do, you know, life is short. There is a time, there is a, there, there is an expiry date, you know, the clock is ticking. Uh, that sounds cold the way I probably have said that, and I don't mean to be cold, I just mean to be real, and I mean to be, you know, to emphasise the point that, you know, freedoms are fragile, they can be taken away, like they were, and again, I don't want to debate the rights and wrongs, but if there's something you want to do, there's somewhere you want to go, there's some something you want to see, just go do it, just go. Just crack on and do it because things can just change i mean you'll see in this video i do kind of the effects of me being alone because i was in the work car park for 10 weeks that was it i interacted with no one apart from getting my keys to the truck 
and going and driving backwards and forwards to places and then saying hello to other drivers in the yard which were god knows how far apart i saw no one i'd done nothing i couldn't see my family i couldn't you know and i'm not saying i was the only one so i'm a special case but 10 weeks in a car park with the blinds down and you know that really did get to me it really did um and as you can see i start you know i do start ranting a bit um through this and it it was you know quite a difficult time good evening guys right well i have broken lockdown essential travel though um i went and grabbed a few little bits from the shop and i went in masked up to here and my hat so you couldn't even you're gonna see my eyes i'm just cooking up loads of food now because next week i'm working six days in a row so i'm off tonight and tomorrow night so i can chill out but if i can do some meal prep today then i'm gonna do it tomorrow i don't even know why i'm filming this i'm just kind of documenting things as through this journey i'm not i mean i'm not frontline like nurses and doctors and military and all that no way near but you know i'm out there every day almost doing what i'm doing like driving a lorry try and stay away from people as much you know try and abide by the rules keep myself safe i don't want them nothing and i don't want to if i have something i don't want to give it to someone else i need to show you my fridge and i challenge anyone to get more in a fridge than i have Oh, see, I've got so much stuff, it's folding out. This is my fridge. I've got to show you this. They are individually wrapped pork chops, chicken thighs, bacon, and butcher's sausages. I've been listening to, like, the radio, like, LBC. And the stories you're hearing on there are... Oh, heartbreaking you know people are going to go bust people are going to lose their homes not yet because the government have, have held that but they can't hold this together forever and they can't pay everyone forever because they're offering to pay 80 percent of your wages if your company keeps you on instead of sacking you like, or letting you go um which is great of the government but i mean that bill is going to come calling at some point. But we're arguing left, right and centre humans with each other. We shoot missiles, bullets and God knows what else we can throw at each other to try and hurt each other. And do some awful, hideous things. And then comes along this invisible little killer. And just says, well that's it, game on, I'm going to wipe you all out. And knocks a sweep straight off our feet. Today I think I'm just going to, I thought I might just bring you along for my day really. Right, outdoor walk. There we go, we started the outdoor walk. So, you can see that I've only been out for one hour. But look at this. Don't get me wrong, it's a Saturday in, in the middle of Hartford. It is quiet, but there's still a lot of people about. Um, and I've only been out for seven minutes 55 seconds on my walk and there's loads of people about i mean i haven't come across any like close or anything i've crossed the road but it's, i mean you can see the cars that are coming and going look welcome to Hartford castle he must be thinking he's getting some food but he ain't it's a lovely place down here Even when it's not locked down, it's a bit busier, but it's not, you know. Our ducks are getting fed, they're happy. But it's nice, it's nice down here. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Just in Hartford. And then if you look here, can you see it through the trees? Oh, there. Look at that. How cool is that? I 
young, we used to come fishing down here. And uh, yeah, crayfishing and with a little rod uh, and trying to catch minnows. Yeah, brilliant fun. So just walking past this shop and I see this sign inside. That's nice to see. Thumbs up, top, top guys. Never been in that shop, don't know what it is, but they're offering essential stuff, you know, food at uh, cost price. So, you know, tip my hat to them for that. Tip my hat to them for that, definitely. The beast. <laughs> One hour and three minutes. Nice little walk. Didn't really do much, to be honest. I was just filming B-roll, um, taking a few photos, and I'll be brutally honest, playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> but stayed out of the way of people, had a walk, got some sun on my face, cheered me up. <laughs> Not that I was down anyway, but you know what I mean. It's nice. Oh, 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 oh. Look at them. Chicken thighs done lovely. That's it today, today guys. I've been out for my exercise. I've had a nice little walk around Hartford. I've done a few bits in the motorhome. Uh, I've done a bit of editing. And now I'm gonna crack on with these. And then watch some TV and then go to bed. Start all over again tomorrow. I wanna say a massive shout out to the sponsor of this video, Surfshark. Now, you guys know how much I love Surfshark. I've used Surfshark for years and years and years and years, and I was using them during COVID. Now, whilst a lot of you guys <laughs> were on your sofas watching Netflix, I was in the truck out there trying to deliver all the shopping. There was quite a lot of downtime during the deliveries, but because I had Surfshark, I was flitting between countries, switching geolocations, and using Netflix to its full advantage whilst in the truck on my tablet. You guys know how much I love Surfshark. I've used them way before I become partners with them and started working with them. I use it on my MacBook, my iPhone, my Mac, uh, my iPad and my tablet, uh, Samsung tablet. I use it on them all because I can get, I, I, all my data is protected. I can use public Wi-Fi to protect my data whilst I'm surfing the internet, which is great. I love that for that. But the main reason I actually use it for is to unlock geo-restricted content, which is absolutely amazing. I've used it abroad all the time. I use it in, in the motorhome sitting here of an evening, but I've never used it more so than when I was in lockdown and I wanted to just sit there and watch stuff like everyone else. Everyone else watched loads of stuff. Whilst I was in the truck, I'd have the iPad because we're waiting for them to unload. We're waiting for loads to come in. It was busy times back then. Um, so I'd just have the tablet with me. I'd quickly find a movie I want to watch. And if I couldn't get it in this country, I went straight on Surfshark, changed my location quickly and oh, wee oui, wee, oui, I'm in France or then I'm in Germany or anywhere around the world. And then I can get the movie and TV shows I want. So massive, massive shout out to Surfshark. If you're looking for a VPN, not only to protect your data, but also to be able to view geo-restricted content, then do use the coupon code URBAN to get up to three months free. It's a risk-free trial, so it's an absolute no-brainer, and you get up to three months free if you use the code URBAN. Links will be in the description below, or you can scan this QR code now, which will take you straight there. Make sure you use the code URBAN to get up to three months free. Thank you very much, Surfshark. You kept me sane during lockdown, and just, yeah, love it. Thank you very much. So I'm off a gap, it's Friday, good Friday. Um, Easter weekend. Haven't really done an update uh, in the last four or five days because just been working and it's all been going on and it's not getting any better. And there's record high deaths in this country, record high cases. It's not a pretty situation overall at all. Um, but I, I just don't know where to start with it. Be fair, I mean, we've had Boris Johnson, he, he got admitted to hospital, he's spent three nights in intensive care, and now he's out, but he's recovering. And I mean, the main thing that this weekend is, is because it's Easter weekend, is the government are begging, begging the UK public to stay home. 
and not go out because it's going to be a scorching weekend. Everyone's going to want a barbecue. Everyone's going to want to go to the park or the beach or the woods, the forest, anywhere for a drive. I mean, there are some. I mean, there was one yesterday that we saw in the in the news. A motorhome drove drove hours and hours just to go on holiday because they thought they they, they might as well because they're on lockdown for the weekend, so they might as well. What, might as well do it so and they're the people that are giving van life as a real bad name but it does seem considerably quieter this morning over the last couple of days it has been quite busy i will say that and there's, there's been people in the uh, spotted in the in the park playing cricket there was like a group of 20 30 guys playing cricket and then the police turned up and they ran away because they knew they were doing wrong there's been house parties street parties um, all across the country, people are not taking it seriously at all. And I'm not laughing at that in any way. I'm just—it's just—it bewilders you. You got all these deaths, and people are just not taking it serious. So now I'm just come to the the, the overpass of Watford Gap just just to film how quiet the road is. Um, I'm not touching anything. I'm not walking over there at all. I'm just going to stay on the bridge just to film. So obviously this is the southbound. This is a southbound carriageway. As you can see, pretty dead. Pretty dead. And then obviously there's a the northbound carriageway. As you can see, again, pretty dead. This is Friday morning at 10 past seven, quarter past seven in the morning. This would normally, right here, be rammed. Constantly, just constant. And, uh, and the same on the other side. And then you, you look at the actual Watford Gap services. The actual car parts of the Watford services are empty. Empty. You know? This... This is just crazy. I mean, it, it, it is a lot quieter. And that is... That is encouraging. Encouraging to see. But let's just hope it holds. Because if it doesn't, I, I can see it getting a lot worse. I was out getting footage uh, of the unique things that I was seeing. And my friend Jamie, he works as a traffic light engineer in London. He was still at work at the time. Um, so he got some really cool shots. I say cool. It was just never seen before. Of London in such quiet like deserted times like a movie he was you know driving around fixing traffic lights and signals and this that, and the other um so i asked him because we were always on the phone because he was at work i was at work we we're always at the phone um i was like you know can you get some footage of like the busy parts of london that are no longer busy right so this is going to be the first time i'm awake on the thursday to do the clap for the nhs and clap for the social care um, and I'm at my mum's my, my care home and they've all turned out to, you know, cheer them on. It's an amazing turnout and it's going to happen in about two minutes time. So, I mean, it's incredible what the amount of people that are here, like for all the emergency services are here, it's not the general public. Um, it's all the carers from the care home, which is just behind me and then there's the press and then there's all the emergency services i don't even know what to expect i've not i've not done this so it's, it's going to be a bit it's, it's weird it's... Wow. Hey! Hey! Such an amazing show of support. Look at them all, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I can't clap with what, two hands. So many people are out in the streets as well. You can hear them everywhere. It's brilliant. I hope this, I just hope this national cheer and, and spirit continues forever onwards. I really do. It is amazing. Amazing. Yay! That was the first clap I've experienced because of 
working nights. It's the amount of people shouting out thank you and everything from the streets is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Loads of people. The spirit's incredible. Well, that was, just fills your heart with, you know, pride and it just fills it with warmth and love, you know, you just really, really, really respect everything that they're all doing because it's, you know, they are right in the face of it, you know, not, not what anyone wants to, where anyone wants to be, but, and they are, and they're, you know, they're not, they're not millionaires, they're not, they're not paid the millions, you know, they're, they're just normal regular people but doing incredible amazing jobs that you know none of us would do without if we didn't have them so thank you very much to every every key worker all the social care all the NHS everyone everyone's doing their part you know even if you're staying at home you're doing your part it got quite dark towards the end and I did start getting a bit you know my mental health did deteriorate um, so it kind of got to the point when um, we were I clapped for the, the the social carers and and the NHS. Um, I think a couple more weeks went past, and then my my mental health did deteriorate because I was just. I think we went into another lock. Like, it's a bit of a blur now, but it just kept getting darker and darker and darker. And my family caught COVID, so I couldn't see them. I couldn't be part of their bubble. The power on my motorhome was still lead acid batteries, so I was using power banks to try and survive. I'd take a power bank into the truck every night and try and charge it up and then try and charge the motorhome from that. When I went out on them odd times to go and fill up um, and get fuel and get everything, the taps that I was using were freezing to get water. So I wasn't getting water as much. So I had to buy bottled and really conserve water. And then the... <laughs> It's so dire, so dire times. I had to really, really restrict gas because, again, I didn't want to go back out to the gas, uh, fill up gas, because people were giving me such abuse. So I'd try and eke out the gas on the fire and just try and wrap up warm and not use the gas heating because I didn't have a diesel heater at the time. So this was, it was just one thing after another. And at, the, at one point, I mean, I stopped recording about this time because I just, I'd lost all my mojo to record. Uh, I wasn't in the right frame of mind. Uh, I'd never really suffered from mental health or anything like that. But my head was just gone. And I do remember, and I've never admitted this on camera, um, I do remember being in the truck one night and driving down the road. Um, and again, big, you know, hairy truck driver got a big you know 44 ton lorry on the back driving down the road and i just cried i don't know why i don't know where it come from i don't know what set it off i don't know what you know. and i must have cried for about 20 minutes because i was just done all i was doing was working and then going back to my motorhome home with no power, no heating, no n no windows open because like I had to keep the blinds down. I was getting notes left on the window from stupid little people, little caretakers in the in the car park, uh, trying to be busybodies, saying I couldn't park there even though I'd been given permission. I was getting abuse in the streets uh, from when I went out with the motorhome. home. <laughs> When I went out in the truck, no one wanted to take your cash. You couldn't park any, you couldn't stop anywhere to get any food or anything because no one wanted to be near lorry drivers. It just sucked, man. It really sucked balls. Yeah. And in the end, I broke. I broke. And um, I went and checked into a hotel under business the business rules or something. I actually filmed a video then. I had a bubble bath. Um, it's quite a f famous video of mine, to be fair, when I was in the hotel and had a bubble bath. Being out of the motorhome for two days, that's all I did. I checked in for two days, and I followed all the rules as I could. Um, but checking into that hotel and being in a different four walls, having some heating, having a bath, oh, my God, it changed 
everything. Only fan only. It's just like it. It just took everything off my shoulders. It cleansed me. It just reset my mojo, and just yeah, really amazing. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, it's a very different video. Like I said, I'd love to know how, what you did during COVID. I'd love to know how it affected you. What are some of the weird stories you've got from COVID? Some of the grim stories. Please drop them in the comments below because, like I say, this is a very special video. Um, it, I've not got any of these kind of videos, really more of these videos. It was just I filmed while I could until until it just got too much. Um, so, yeah, please drop any comments you've got. Please be nice in the comments. I don't want arguing about the rights and wrongs of lockdown. I don't want arguing about COVID as a whole. We all experienced it. Please be kind. Please be nice. And if you've got nothing nice to say, don't comment. Just be nice, people. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.